Oh man, the show of the year is back with this fourth season, and oh my, it is the most degenerate, gnarly, vile, disgusting, right ring, kind of realistic shit I've seen, and it's only been four episodes. Whew. But I will say each and every one of them gave me chills. And yes, I'm talking about The Boys. The Boys is a show on Amazon Prime that came in years ago and took everyone by storm. No, not that kind of storm. I'm talking about everyone loved this show immediately. They liked how different it was, how true it was, how fresh it was than compared to like the other Marvel or DC formula they use for heroes. It's something new. Controversies, the, um, the gore, the disgusting scenes, the FX is the top tier in this show. But before I talk about season four, y'all already know I gotta do I did this for Arcane and other shows. Let me talk about season one through three real quick because i haven't talked about the boys on this channel before i just show memes and that's really it i was so late to watching this i'm talking about like right when season three ended that's when i started but anyway season one was really good i liked it especially towards the end and then season two oh my god that shit got better i was like bro they top season one damn it became peak fiction and then season three oh my god that was cinema i don't cast my favorite season of the boys so far season three is cinema because when you see some of the characters are changing fights that homelander and butcher fight scene with soldier boy oh my god and his character alone that damn shook the boys and it had me dying laughing the whole entire time but yeah the fight scenes are dope the climactic end to the starlight character or at least for her hero wise and that shit had me in chokehold man go watch it and i even liked it more in the rewatch but now i'm wondering how season four could possibly top that and with the first four episodes it got hell of potential, especially episode four. <laughs> Let's get started, man. Episode one, whoa. All right, going to the season, I knew a few things were going to happen. Butcher might be out of here soon. Huey's a killer now. And Starlight's working with the boys. And also, this Walking Dead nigga's here. Let me start talking about the first episode, because we got a lot of episodes to go over. And let me just say this, too. I'm mainly talking about, like, my favorite parts and plus the funny moments. Plus stuff that caught me off guard. Which was damn near everything. So the beginning had a lot of action stuff going on that already caught my attention. The boys is already going crazy and the gore is here in your face. But it's great to see the whole game back together like the good old team called the boys. Which is a great name. Forget what this maniac say. <laughs> but while watching it, I noticed in the trailer and a lot more in the first episode that it seems like Homelander could be spiraling. Every time he's alone, it screams three things. One, midlife crisis. Two, that evil aura. And three, he could be having those mental thoughts again when he has like three or four different personalities. I mean, it is actually scary seeing four different Homelanders, but also in the episode, it dealt with the whole Starlight versus Homelander trial, which I thought you know was interesting, because especially after the events of season three towards the end, I was wondering how far would this go? I don't know why I didn't expect other chaos in this, because like, that's exactly what happened. Like, it was madness between these stands, and like, bro, they are going this hard to like riot it feels like war oh my god <laughs> and even though i liked most of the first episode i gotta admit it did throw me off and i actually didn't like this at first was well, frenchy and this guy relationship i'm like what huh like i said i didn't like it at first and i thought it was forced to but then i forgot it's been talked about not that much though about frenchy kind of like being bi but because me and my stupid little brain i thought kimiko and frenchy were an item but then i also remember that she kind of like you're my family his ass so like yeah that's wasn't gonna happen and she even gave him the kudos in the season to like yo you could explore other options like <laughs> this is not a thing between them <laughs> now the um frenchy being bi and the whole relationship with this guy it makes sense now i just it threw me out of loop for a minute and also late in the episode we got introduced to new important characters and heroes which are sister sage and firecracker now these two are wonderful additions to the show Homelander flew to Sage house with this NPC ass fit on and he himself trying to get her to join Vought because let's be honest a group like this compared to the old Vought yeah they definitely need a smart person for this team but yeah I love how chill she is sometimes rude but honest of a character she tell like it is which of course that's her like you know trait and power but she can read characters like a book. And speaking of books, goddamn, organize your plays. This is ridiculous. But I could definitely see her become like a mastermind controlling people and stuff. So yeah, we'll see how far her character goes. And we got Firecracker. Okay. Um, hear me out. Oh, hey, her character is, um, something. She represents something I would like to call a MAGA-like thing, but with a little sass to it. She's a D1 hater. I'm not gonna say it. She has a great charm to her and great podcasting skills. They're pretty believable accent. I'm not gonna say it. And she has a true to character name, kind of looks to be like one of those weaker heroes too, like when it comes to fighting. But she knows how to get a crowd going. And um, 
God damn it. She is fucking hot. Damn. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> but bro, to be fair, I like Valerie, the actress in Detroit Become Human because she played Kara. I love Kara so much. But I will say, I'm not as down bad as this nigga in the next episode. But like, she definitely got my heart stringing, man. I ain't gonna lie. Sage is bad too. Like, I see what deep is going on. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. I'm sorry. I'll talk about those later. Bro. Now, I'm gonna talk about the funny moments, such as the Homelander. <laughs> scene with a train and deep him ordering deep to you know uh do something to a train <laughs> and then bro it's crazy even how the tense this scene was that's how much ore this nigga got but i was crying laughing because he said get your ass up <laughs> and then deep talking about some like i wasn't actually gonna do it nigga shut up nigga. oh okay speaking of deep i actually support him and his relationship with his new relationship with the octopus i know she has a name but i don't really care because well it's an octopus. The bat scene with Homelander stands. Now, it was mostly gruesome than funny, but it's crazy how this bum right here did all that dick riding only to be set up by his idol. And then the new Black Nora be reacting to certain things like and talking and like pretty much how we would react to things watching the show. And then, yeah, once again, he talks and everyone constantly tells him you're not supposed to fucking talk. Oh, and the butcher sin and Newman, uh, this pick of a rear end, like legit a butcher thing would do. And but I'm happy butcher didn't go behind Huey back to, you know, like Ryan to go to a certain place. Thank you, Becca, for that. And yeah, um, but this was a great first episode. And now episode two and three dropped the same day as the first one. And it only got crazier. Let's talk about the next two. Oh, whoa. Later. Now, me talking about these episodes might be all over the place. I mean, well, because the episodes itself went from, like, dropping bombshell news to some funny scenes to some rough, sad scenes to firecracker seducing Homelander. I'm sorry, John. Look at her, nigga. Mr. Milkman, you see this beauty right here? And you just gonna ignore this? See, a guy like me would have gave her all of my attention. You heard me? Okay, okay, now, now I'm done. I'm done. Moving on. I'm just gonna get this out the way with. Um, I saw that firecracker friend, what was his name, Sana scene. That was disgusting and I almost threw the fuck up. But yeah, episode two starts off with Huey's mom. I forgot to mention that his dad ended up in a hospital and it's sad because given how close him and his dad was and then, yeah, it's like this, yeah, it's kind of tough. We see his mom after three seasons of slight buildup and of course, Huey's mad at her understandably and she also has like um abilities that she could do with the dad and this upsets Huey a lot more because well that's his homie so uh, why would she get the rights to do some things yeah it's it's a whole lot of stuff and even though episode two and three was a lot two definitely had like a lot more drama that i remember because i mean shit <laughs> mm kicks butcher from the boys and they're supposed to be dogs but butcher finally told him that he has like certain months to live and this, of course, upsets everyone because that's a big secret to keep. Kimiko, my goat, is trying to escape her past. Frenchie is enjoying his time with his new guy, for now at least. Starlight is dealing with a lot, but mostly the firecracker comments that are getting more attention by the minute. And I didn't even mention the whole Ryan Butcher home in the drama, this family drama right here. God damn. And speaking of Ryan, I'm so curious how the future Ryan's going to be in this series. Hopefully we get like a little glimpse about that. I am scared for him if he like becomes like another version of Homelander, which I doubt that might happen. But he might become human like Butcher, at least, well, that's kind of bad enough, but like at least has a heart like Butcher, I say that. It's closer with Homelander at first, but he's trying to, you know, teach Ryan how to become a strong being instead of like a human. And this eventually leads to like, you know, him acting in the commercials, him doing stunts. And yeah, he kind of gets his first uh, kill by doing this. On accident, of course, but yeah, it's crazy because they rehearsed this shit too. And then he just, <laughs> he let it all out right there and boom. And I thought like this is going to haunt him too. But I guess he doesn't care about that. Homelander, he's upset that he's not really tapping into his full potential, which is crazy. But Butcher's trying to teach him how to become more of a human. At least, you know, what Becca would have wanted. And I've noticed some character development too already, such as my nigga Deep. Growing a set, yes sir, thanks to say seeing him get serious with Ashley, <laughs> another goat by the way, who I didn't actually realize how much he loved boys him a lot. So but he stood on business this time and look at the aura he gained, but she was scared as shit. And then bro does <laughs> These niggas so funny bro. Man, I still think about that scene, that meme where he just turns around when he gets brought back to the vault. It's so funny, bro. Speaking of Ashley, 
her losing her job to Sage was funny, but kind of sad because, well, she's one of those characters that, like, how did she make it this far? I feel like she's going to be one of the ones that lasts all the way up to the end to, like, survive and last the whole story of the boy. Two scenes from this episode that just stuck was the climactic battle of episode two and three. Two was crazy. I mean, Butcher came back and saved the guys, but he told them to go because of the whole fiasco. And then they came back to save him, which is, you know, boys for life, man. That's what I'm talking about. And the whole fight would have been good, but it was goddamn too many sores on my screen, bro. Like, get this shit off my TV. Man. Episode 3 can happen. And this all started because Homeland found out that <laughs> Huey was, like, investigating. He talks him. I can smell his ass. <laughs> so he's chasing them, and then he lasered them, and he killed one of the people that was rehearsing for the Vox skate show. I'm talking about lasered in half. Oh, my God. Like, the evil Superman himself just didn't care. And then from that led to a whole everyone scattering. A nigga had, like, three kills off of his blade alone and just the most gruesome way ever. Like, they get a fiend off of doing this shit. And also, a fun fact. Uh, I don't really like blood or gore in certain, like, movies and shows, especially, like, scary movies. That's why I don't, like watch shows like that because it just get disgusting and kind of like makes me queasy a little bit but this one i learned to tolerate but some scenes i gotta look away from all the time like <laughs> and this was low-key one of them because like i did not want to see a nigga get like decapitated off of the skates oh and this scene of homelander <laughs> bro is that not scary bro like is he getting even stronger like, i know he's getting older and shit but he's getting stronger this is this is scary when I finished episode three, I got the feeling that shit is hitting the fan bad. Whether it's the groups, the characters, um, the society, the government, A Train, which I'll get back to that later. I gotta point out too that I love the whole volume marketing team behind it. Cause like they show like different commercials, their rallies, the TV shows, movies, and probably my favorite thing they did was that Mortal Kombat style video game. Like, bro, why is this not real? I want to play this shit. Someone got to make a version of this, like, IRL. Like, I'm definitely going to play it for a video. But before I talk about episode four, I got to say also, too, that I actually hope we do get that final battle between Homelander and Butcher. They keep hyping it up, and I don't know if it'll happen because, well, Butcher's on his way out. He can't tease him in season three, and then, like, this all happens. Like, you know, I don't want to see them fight in battle, even though I got a prediction who might win, but I still want to see it, though. Even though it might be at the end of the season, I would be there no matter what. And I noticed, too, like, Butcher is a character that always, you know, has good intentions sometimes. And he actually sees himself being the bad guy in most situations, but he has a heart. And in season four, he definitely shows that heart a lot more. Like, with the whole Ryan scene when he met up at his place. And let's just say Butcher had a plan to get Ryan away from Homelander involving uh, baked goods. But he knew that that was wrong and Beckham wouldn't have won that. So he aborted the plan because I think he's working with the um, Walking Dead guy. I know he has a name, but I'm calling him that because that's all I recognize him from. And yeah, it just had a nice father and son almost like talk. So that was nice. And then he got Homeland to find out where he been. And then he got his father of the year moment right here where he just yells at him. Oh, man, poor Ryan. Then he got the four different Homelanders talk to him. And, you know, the YNW Melee's times four. One of them said that you basically need to go back to your roots. And then this leads to episode four, which I'll probably say my favorite episode so far. And the most chaotic, crashing out in this <laughs> diabolical, unhinged episode. <sighs> Let's go. Two days later. Oof, I don't even know where to begin with this one. All right, so many things happened in this episode. Halfway through, I paused it and had to take a little break because there was a lot going on. I mean, right at the gate, Butcher hit his head and I thought he was done for it, but I forgot he's a soup, so he's not normal. So he'll bounce back, but it's looking like, <laughs> it's not looking good for him, but he keep passing out, man. I'm getting scared. Huey's dad is at death door right now. Firecracker is hosting her biggest show yet. And all right, okay, let's be honest. Even though I sound like a simp earlier, but looks aside, she's a piece of shit of a character. Like, one of those clout-chasing people that try to play dirty only to bring herself up. And I think it's a character like Starlight Need a rival like that because she is her biggest op right now. And that goes back from their childhood, too, and back in the pageant shit. Oh, man, yeah, it gets so much deeper. But you'll see what she does later, man. And then we got the side quest from Huey and Kimiko. And Huey had this idea of, you know, saving his dad the only way he can, and that's by getting Compound V. And the only hero that can make it happen is literally A-Train and... You know, they got beef from, like, season one. If you know, you know. A-Chain definitely owes Huey. If he got that compound V, that would make them even. Because he's going behind everyone's back. Especially Homeland. And, you know, Homeland is damn near a god. So if he finds out, it is up. But before I talk more about that, yeah, the Kimiko storyline, I think it's looking underrated this season. Because I don't see people talking about that enough. But, yeah, she got some uh, former members that in her, I guess, 
a background back in the old days. Like her, she definitely hates Kimiko the passion, but they're kind of like very similar in a way. So I think Kimiko wants to save her, but she can't really like afford to right now because she's going through a lot with the boy suits. But in the episode, Kimiko Ops definitely came back to try to kill Huey and Kimiko, especially Kimiko though. But like, yeah, you already know, Kimiko slows these niggas. She's damn near overpowered sometimes. But she was going off. And I remember Huey got in a 1v1 fight. And I think before this, he got like hurt. <laughs> he broke his leg. And I'm not laughing because he broke his leg. It is the fact that he gets hurt a lot. And I think I remember last season, uh, he wanted Kimiko to break his arm. <laughs> and he broke it. <laughs> and the way it happened was just funny. But yeah, anyways, he got hurt again. And Kimiko tried to assist him with some weapons and like shield and stuff so Huey got in one v one fight and it was nice choreography too like I could tell I saw like behind the scenes too but Huey low-key defending himself and then got to get back got some critical hit points and I remember towards the end he legit got him one good move and then he went for the goddamn kill that's all I'm talking about and if you don't know he had a kill before last season so he's been killing niggas but that's time he uses his super power because he you know compound being up but this time, it was just straight hands and defense. It was him, his shield, his weapons, and he locked the fuck in. And after he killed him with by himself, he looked at him and then he could tell, oh yeah, he's numb to this shit now. He's one of those. He will kill to survive. And that's what I like about this new Huey, man. I remember last time he got the kill, he started smiling. But this time, he was straight face. He was like looking like, yeah, nigga, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was a great fight scene, though. And I'm glad both of them are okay. Late in the episode, A-Train. Stuck to his deal and got the compound V. And then he was like, we good? And he was like, we good. And then, let me talk about the A-Train arc. Because I think this is my favorite thing is in season four. I think A-Train as a character, I feel like at first I hated him. Is that how he represented himself back then? And the shit he did, like kind of like brushed it off. And he was cocky son of a bitch. He was basically a nigga that got all the clout. He would flex. Got all the, yeah, trust me, this was him in the beginning of the series. And then slowly throughout the show, a lot of things happened to him. Especially season three. I remember that whole racist pig versus family thing, that whole story arc. Uh, him got bitched by Homelander actually multiple times. He's been behind his back. People lost respect for him. He almost died a couple of times. He just gets shitting on now pretty much by everybody. Literally everybody. And me, I've seen like a lot of redemption arcs in different stories. Some are pretty good. Some seem like a little forced. But this one, I'm surprised. I know he made mistakes and shit. Sometimes, you know, you mess up and then that will cost you for the rest of your life, you know. You get treated different and that's what happened to him. And now he's trying to fix everything because what else he can do. Cause like, and I think even sooner or later he knows something really bad is going to happen. So he's trying to right his wrongs and that includes Huey. And even he pointing out all this shit started with you. This whole chaos, yeah. And he kind of is in line, at least from Huey's standpoint. But I believe A-Train is a second chance. Yes, and plus, you know, I seen a whole bunch of TikToks, people feeling sorry for him, which I ain't gonna lie, it kind of worked on me too, like, damn, bro. Now, will I say the same from Homelander? Nope, because did you see what this psychopath did in episode four? Oh my god, the torture room all over again, times five. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna say that one for last, because I gotta talk about Starlight crashing out, oh my. And what I'm trying to figure out is, who the hell gave fucking Firecracker that information about Starlight baby situation? That was one of the most craziest news drops in this season, and they literally kept it secret from the public, from us, the viewers, and literally their friends, I think. But who is the mole in Starlight's group? I think it's him, low-key, but nah, how did she get that information? And with that, and that's how you cross the line, and that's how you see OG Starlight just beat the f*** out of her, beating the brakes. I mean, Car, I'm sorry, Firecracker didn't have one punch back, no kicks, no nothing. She tried to defend herself, she couldn't. Boom, 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 but she was crashing out. I think that was part of her plan, because you know, publicity. But still, like, hey, she was punching you right in the nose, but you could have got head trauma, you could have died. Starlight is really strong. And right after that, too, Frenchie and his guy broke up. And because he told him the secret of which what he did his family and bro, that nigga is gonna crash out of him too. Why is everybody crashing out? Speaking of crashes out, we say the best for last. Homelander and his devious lip backs from his childhood. Oh my god, yeah, so he we don't know, he got tormented and it's a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, he was like a guinea pig to these guys. And we didn't even know that. He just skipped over that because he's already, you know, Homelander. He's meant to be the next Superman and shit. Remember that mirror scene? Yeah, the four personalities? He wanted to go back to his roots so he could kill everybody that made him this way, potentially. And yeah, he blamed them for what he's become right now. And he killed, I think, most of them. Uh, but the way he did it, first by burning somebody, second by, um... Oof, by um, having them do some acts in front of everybody to embarrass themselves. 
And uh, you see what he does afterwards, laser that shit off. <laughs> and then laughs at him like a maniac. And I think one of the head people there like knew what he was trying to do. But still, like, you see what he did. He didn't even kill her. He just let her see the destruction that he caused. Just so much, like, it's the gore, explicit stuff. And man, this would traumatize her and traumatize them while they was, you know, breathing that moment. And yeah, with this scene, you could just, and the way he just looks at the end, you know, all that shit over him. And just, you know, smiling like a villain, but he's a hero. Like, this is crazy, bro. Top tier villain in cinema right now. <laughs> his character, and the acting, by the way, from uh, the guy that plays Oman, I forgot his name real quick, but he's so good, bro. Because I believe, dude, this feels so real, bro. <laughs> he's such a great actor, man. This was his performance of the year. He needs to win an Oscar with this. Cause that, this episode is insane. Oh, I almost forgot. Butcher got in a fight with this guy, and the guy was dead ass. Actually, he's going to win, low-key. And then, all of a sudden, he just exploded or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I think this was Butcher's powers, you know, behind it. But, like, he didn't even know what he did. Like, he lost memory. He lost control of his power. And I got a bad, bad feeling about this later on. Because, man, oh, my God. What if he does it to one of his... Oh, I don't want to think about it. I don't want to think about it. Who gave... Huey's dad, Compound V. It was a mom, bro. Because don't forget, she's a nurse. I think she did it. But so many things playing to episode 8. I saw the preview of that. It looks already a lot. We even got some Gen V kids in here. So, like, I don't know. The rest will come or what. Four episodes in, and this shit's already been insane. Boys is back. And let's see what the next four episodes bring. And lastly, who do I think would die in this season? You know, it happens every season. I feel like as much as I wanted to get his redemption story and get some happiness, it might be A-Train, bro. But it could be deep. You never know. Uh, it could be, hell, even Ashley, which I hope not. Um, Butcher, I think if he doesn't die either, I think either him or Homer would die. I don't know which one who would die, but I definitely don't think both of them would die. Firecracker and Sage, I can see them dying too. But yeah, uh, by the way, the last episode of this series, uh, episode 8, season 4, is called Assassination Run. <sighs> A Train versus Homelander? Holy shit. <laughs> season four has already been peak, man. Comment down below what you think about this season so far. About what characters you want to see go or what characters you like. And yeah, see y'all next time. Subscribe. Hope you like this video. I know this is not never anime or Mario or Sonic content, but I'm doing something different, trying new shows and shit. So yeah, let me know how you think about it down below. Thumbs up if you like it. I'm out, man. Peace. Oh, whoa.